Friday morning, <clears throat> I call it the weekend is here. Rest is new edition of the show, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I've got so much to discuss this morning. So, so much. And you know, my angle is always different from every other person's angle. I always have a different opinion of issues, really. And I guess that's what stands me out from the rest of them. I've got two guests on the show this morning. One of them, the sports analyst, has been here many times. And um, his name is Abayo Miyajuwele. He'll be talking extensively about the post-match assessment of the Super Eagles game at the Test in Balogun Stadium against the Crocodiles of Lesotho. I've also got Odunwayo Ruth Hassan. She's female, one of the very few that we have in Lagos who actually covers sports extensively. She goes around practically all the stadiums across Nigeria trying to get us for one or two things. And she's just the right person to ask these questions I want to ask about the post-match assessment of the Eagles versus the Soto match. Okay, let me start with Odunwayo. Odunwayo, good morning. Good morning. Great to be here. Great to have you on the show, Odunwayo. Thank you. Abayami, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Wallace. Great to have you, Abayami. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, it's a pleasure living here. Now, Odunwayo, let me start with you on the show now. You are somebody who goes around stadiums across Nigeria to cover stories by yourself. You know, so you're always spot on. Now, it's so sad that the ticket was supposed to be free, the match against Lesotho. Eventually, they were sold by touts at the gate for as much as 15,000 Naira. Let's start with that. What went wrong? How did the tickets go from free to 15,000 Naira or 10,000 Naira? How? Hello, Wadu. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, are you, start, are you starting with me? Yes, yes. Okay, your question again, please. How did the tickets go from free to be sold for 15,000 Naira by the touts at the gates? Well, for me, it was just uh, the organization. The whole thing was just, it was just messed up at the end of the day. Were you there I at the stadium? Some of the fans that were given the tickets decided to sell this to some of the fans that didn't have the ticket. For me, it was just poor organization. The whole thing was poor. Even for the, for the journalists, everyone has complained about the tickets and how they got in, into the stadium. It, it's really, really a sad one. I, I was really disappointed for the fact that this is even Lagos. I felt everything would be more organized. And then I ended up being disappointed. The whole thing was just messed up to me. Although, how, how did the tickets get to the... Or don't, how did the tickets get to the towns? How? Like I said, some tickets were given out for free. At least I saw some few of, of platforms that gave it out for free. The Lagos State um, Sports Commission on Twitter also gave it out. So I guess some of those fans got it from there. But apart from there, I, 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 wouldn't even, I don't even know how it got to, to their hands. Just the Lagos State Co Sports Commission, they really have a lot of questions to answer. I don't know how it got to them, but the old stuff was messed up, and it was really, really disappointing. Abayomi, good morning again. Yes, Wally. Now, yeah, we morning. are sports journalists. We cover sports. Now, you only give passes to only 20 journalists in Lagos, print and radio. You don't give TV at all. And then, touts are selling tickets. People called me on the phone and said, Wally, I have tickets to give you. They have tickets in, 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 in surplus. We don't get any, and we cover sports in Lagos. That's truly sad. How did the tickets get to the towns? Okay, um, firstly, I would say um, tickets were said to be given out for free. However, there were certain process to get the tickets. Now, you know, these towns are hustlers. Well, some of us might not speak, oh, because I'm this and this, I'm getting relaxed to get the towns. This part, they see it as a business opportunity. They know lots of people who want to get the tickets. They go, they go beyond every means to get the tickets to sell. And you would also have to call into question uh, the organization for the, uh, for the march here, yeah, because the plans were in place. I could tell you, they said, oh, cars are not allowed to pass under the bridge. Cars will go through the bridge from the barracks. Everything was said to the that, oh, this was a great plan on paper. But the execution, because a lot of people were outside the gate. I've not gone to a field where you start collecting tickets from the gate of the field. People were there as early as 4 p.m. and they could not have access into, into the stadium itself. Not even talk of the main bowl. So the organization was needs to be called into question. The distribution of the ticket definitely needs to be called into, into, into question. And now you also have to ask what swan, 
Next one is because it's an eye opener for us in Lagos. I think that the the uh, the NUJ, the Swan body, and the Beyond in Lagos are the biggest in Nigeria. So when things like these arise, you need to call them into question. We know when, we know there sometimes in the past, one uh, vocational nation of Nigeria would always uh, rally everybody together to get to get, to get viewing rights to to show games. So um, that, those, those are the days when things went on perfectly. But with, with, the, uh, with the recent developments, there are so many questions to be taken. It's an eye opener for us because we really haven't had a very big uh, football tournament in Lagos. So this particular match against Lesotho exposed a lot of flaws in our, in our journalism space and our Abayami. organizational attributes. Abayami, if you can permit me this morning, I want to break the egg once and for all. Let's, let's just break the egg once and for all, yeah? Okay. It's okay. obvious our journalists in Lagos have lost their respect. They've lost their clout. And the Lagos State Government and the, and the Lagos State Sports Commission have no respect for sports writers. Simple. Uh, I would say I would say it's not it's not only in Lagos. I think journalists in Nigeria in general are usually you not know, highly regarded. And I think it, and the, the earlier the earlier all sports ministry you see that there is no sports without the media. There is no sports without the journalists. Then they can start respecting journalists. You know, you hear stories of Nigeria games in the past, how that the national stadium Surile, you hear the way the, the, the journalists were being revered. You hear the way organizations were, were being were, were being revered for the reverence for journalists. But we've lost all of these things. And I know uh, Swan just completed the uh, uh, election. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm hoping this is one of the things the new body of executives would be addressing as they get into office. Now, I don't, let me come to you on this one. I don't, um, the truth be said, um, some of the gist that we are hearing on the ground is that our journalists always go to events wait especially for brown envelopes, which contains five, ten thousand 10,000 most times. And due to that, we have lost our respect. And so these guys are treating us any because we have actually gone there and sold our birthrights for change in a brown envelope. Yes, for me, I think like Abaya me rightly said, the new Swan um, in, um, president and the other, um, I mean, chairman and other bodies have been in, um, that the election that just took place, place, I'm just hoping they would deal with this. It was the same thing you just said, right? And the, the journalists that went to Benin Republic, they also complained about the same thing. They said when they got to Benin Republic and they didn't have access to some of the players and all of that, because some of the players were being said to have said the, they felt the journalists are always after them because of money. I, I think just everything needs to change about this. We had so many things like that. You know, some of them just went there to get content, to just, uh, just to put out the information, to put out there, but, but they are being seen as if they want to beg money from the players. So I think the, 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 the swan uh, new elected people that just got into the, I just hope they can do something about this and, 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 and with the way, especially when it comes to the covering of the Super Eagles. This is not just the first time. I, I, I hope you can remember that they have the same issue during the time of Mikel Obi, that Mikel Obi won't grant interviews to some of the journalists because they sure. thought they're always coming after the brown envelope. I just hope this thing just 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 got to change in time. So Abayami, does Odun's um, solution yes, strike a problem or, or a solution to this? She says the first thing the new Swan election elected officials should do is try and work on the respect for journalists across the country. And Lagos especially. Um I I, I, I agree I agree with Odu I agree with Odu perfectly. I agree with Odu perfectly. But um, at this point, I would also say, being a member of Swan, I would also say there are so many challenges uh, Swan is also faced with, and I and I think the bulk, the largest bulk of uh, of the work lies on the leadership of Swan. Even even at various uh, television broadcast stations, print stations, you would see that even the administrators of those stations need to revere the sports department because there is this uh, there is this uh, there is this uh, general belief that sport does not bring money into the station as much as political news, business stories, and all of those. So when you go to most stations, you find that the least, the least in red department in each station is the sports department. So from there, the things need to change. Most likely, so many sports journalists are handicapped at their own station. And now, this is one of the jobs of SWAN, because SWAN is also supposed to serve as a pressure group to pressure these stations into doing the right thing. To check maps these stations to ensure the welfare of the sports uh, of the members of SWAN in their various stations are respected. 
So I think Budi Bumi or Green Alley Led Board, this one Sherman's Led Board, is going, uh, is going to do a whole lot. They have a lot to do in this their new, uh, in their, in this, their new dispensation. Okay. Audrey, let me come to you on this one. I call this one the shame of a nation. I am saying this with so much pain in me right now. That's talking to you, Audrey, now. All right. The Spopotas Club came to the match. Five different fractions. And they all wanted to sit down in different places. Eventually, the Lagos State Sports Commission chairman said, listen, Ashola Yekweku said, listen, this is where we arranged for Supporters Club. You all stay here or you all go away. So they all stayed in one place and they were all singing different songs all through the match. How can five different group of people try and sing a song for us to enjoy? That would be noise, not music. They were all trying to sing different songs at the same time. I call that the shame of a nation. Yes, we didn't show that to the world, but we saw it. And to avoid it next time, what can we do? How can five different fractions of one supporters club come to a stadium to come and sing different songs for one match? How? It's so sad, really. I felt really bad. How did, I mean, how did we get here? That we, we, we now start having five different supporters clubs on the same field just for one game. It's really, really sad. First and foremost, there was no, nothing like social distancing among those um, supporters. That was quite obvious. Even on camera, I saw the game on TV. Everything looked disjointed. The different factions have not helped with the supporters club at all. Okay. Now, let me come to you on this one. Before I came right. to this platform, I had one of the fractions, the head of the foreign fractions, in my studio then. Now I'm here now, and I intend to invite him next week on Feelingly. He said one of the reasons why the other fractions intend to continue this struggle for hold is because there was a FIFA um, palliative for supporters club, and only one fraction got it and took it to themselves. And that they forgot to tell the FIFA that there are different fractions. Now all of this is getting very messy. What can we do to solve this problem once and for all? Um, the, the leadership, the leadership of the Nigerian Football Federation has a lot to do in this regard. Uh, I believe all the factions sprang up from the same, uh, from the same rule. We would see that they all know themselves, and it is because it is because of um, it is because of this uh, remuneration uh, given out to them after each game that cost uh, that call this round for. We know the sports in Nigeria football, football generates the most for the sports club and like the best uh, that is the most um, uh, expected or let me say known sports club um, you have in Nigeria. So it's, it's going to be bad for for this fraction of the team to continue. Fractions, fraction, fraction in all sports in Nigeria is becoming is becoming a thing that's getting so annoying. So the NSF board led by Amaju Pinnick needs to come into this, get all factions together and let them get to a resolution. That is the only way Nigeria can move forward. Now, what you know, if you have, if you have a supporter club of over a thousand, everybody can come together under one leadership. It's no problem. It's, it's more. It gives us, uh, it gives us more credence. Imagine you have a 500 man band at a game playing the same thing, chanting the same thing. The PR, I really believe the PR they can run around that can work very well for the Nigerian football in itself. Okay, uh, Odun, let's, let's look at our continual shame with Supporters Club now. When we were in Russia, we had a complaint by one of the fractions who actually called Nigeria then from Russia and said the NFF purposely left them at the stadium in Russia and took another well, fraction to the match. And they had to actually source for funds to get to that match to go and meet them there. And the guy said it online. He said it to, uh, to Nigeria. He was on Twitter. He came back home and was filming. We're, we're, we're taking this, degree, this grace from here all the way to Russia and other World Cups. And it has to stop. It has to stop. We are doing this at home here. We've done it in Russia. Where else next? Are we going to disgrace ourselves again? Hello, I didn't get that. Now, we took this disgrace to Russia, where a fraction was left alone in, a, in the, the airport in Russia. They took one fraction, NFF took one fraction. So, we're disgraced there. The 
was on social media and everywhere. Now we're testing Balogun Stadium. Where next? How do we stop this disgrace from going forward? More than it has begun as this. I can't hear you. Oh. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you perfectly. I can hear you perfectly. Okay, now this happened in Russia when a particular fraction was left at the airport, and the NFF took one fraction. I'm sure you know the story. Yeah. And it was all over social media then. It was a disgrace for Nigeria and Russia then. Now we're back here. It's testing Balogun oh. Stadium. Where next? Uh, we're next. If we continue like that, like I said earlier, if we continue like this, still, uh, Pinnick and his board decide to take a bold step and address this issue. And the only way you can address this is to call everybody to order and have a referendum. I'll call it a referendum. Have a referendum with all factions. Because, like I said earlier, there's nothing wrong if you have thousands in the Sobota Slope. We've seen different bands. We've seen, uh, we've seen different classical bands. Yeah, about 500 people, classical bands, musically. So it's, 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 it's raising the spirit of the game, raising the spirit of the Super Eagles. So it's nothing wrong if you have them with their thousands of the band under one leadership. So NFL needs to come into play. Only NFL can solve this issue. And that's okay. Okay, now, so let's go to my next um, discussion for this morning. Now, Benin City, the Edo State capital, is a gorg as the 20th edition of the National Sports Festival begins on Friday, that's today, with 8,000 athletes expected to vie for honors in 40 events. The festival was initially scheduled for March 20th to April 6, 2020, but was called off following the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. Thereafter, the festival suffered three more postponements in December 2020, as well as in January and February this year, due to paucity of funds, with the Edo State government saying they didn't have the financial strength to host the national event. Again, with just a few days to the commencement of the festival, the sports ministry was considering hosting the event in Abuja, as the ministry and state failed to reach a truce over funds from the federal government to stage the festival. Now, both parties eventually agreed on terms, and the festival is set to host after initial hiccups. The main arena for the festival, the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium, has been refurbished to world-class standard with other centers expected to host various events also in good shape. Now, the Games Village opens on Saturday, that's tomorrow, with athletes and officials expected to present certificates and documentation of COVID-19 tests and vaccination before they are admitted into the facility. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo will officially declare the Games open on Tuesday. Now, Governor Abdullah Iganduje of Kano State has charged the 206 athletes from the state going for the National Sports Festival Edo to work hard, show spirits of sportsmanship, and win gold medals. The governor said this in a statement issued to newsmen by the Chief Press Secretary to the state's Deputy Governor, Hassan Musa Fage. Now, Ganduje bade farewell to the state's contingents who will be departing on Friday for the sports fiesta. That's today. Represented by his deputy, Dr. Nasiru Gauna, Ganduje said that his administration, since coming on board in 2015, had given adequate priority to sports to engage the youth to be employed. Now, um, Odu, I hope you heard that. Hello. Did you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Now, sports festival. We are getting ready. At least we'll get there today. They were allowed to go in. Vaccines must be shown that you have taken it. But that's not my point. My point is, the Edo State government, their body language has only shown that they don't care about the health implications of doing this thing. All they want to do is get it done at all costs. I didn't get the question. I could only hear the Edo State government. Now, the Edo State government, their body language says that they don't care about the health implications, COVID-19, of this thing. All they want is get this thing done at all costs, not caring whose ox is God. Okay, I didn't really get your question, but I, I, I think you were saying that the those state government, their body language towards the pandemic, right? Yes, they, are, they want these games to go on, despite not thinking about the health implications of COVID-19 on the games. Oh, no, I, I don't think that's the body language for me. I, I, I think they, they put everything in place by demanding for COVID-19 tests and results and then asking some of the athletes to go to the vaccination. And all that. I think they are well prepared for me. Apart from the issue of funds, 
and everything they had earlier on. I think everything is in place. So yeah, the fans won't be much. I don't know if the, I don't know the amount of fans that will be coming in. I don't think the fans will be much. So there won't be once the accidents are being tested and they have some of them are, are being vaccinated as well. I, I think everything everything is under control right now. I think the preparations are top notch. Actually, even Edo states are one of my favorites for the national sports festival right now. Okay, Biomi, states are spending money. Niger state government has approved 22 million naira for the state's 120 man contingent to the 28th National Sports Festival. 22 million from one state. Good money being spent for the youth of your state to make it better tomorrow. Um, it was, it was on, on, on seeing that news, I was excited that um, they would put, uh, they would put that much on the ground for, for their contingent. I must also say right now, um, I'm at Rope Park, where the, where the basketball team of the Lagos State, uh, they are currently having their trainings with the vice president of Lagos State Basketball Association here in present, and the two coaches, Kuchinka and Ogo. I, I do not think you guys are ready to move today. Can I speak to one of them? Can we speak to one of them? Uh, the, the, training, uh, the training is still going on now. Okay. They are all on court, uh, taking part to the training. I'm not, uh, uh, to be able to access them, but I can tell you, Olumi, right now, yeah. is right here. He's right there with the, with the team, getting sure that they are, they, are, they are doing all they can to prepare. But let my, me ask you... My, my, the, team, the team should be in Edo State right now, regardless. The concern is in two days. They should be in Edo State right now, in some hotels, doing their practice in Edo State right now. Also, I need to put into question what um, the, gov the state government and uh, the state government and, uh, and the federal government have put in place as regards security. We know, we know, we know the tons, because COVID-19 is one. Security is another. Now we know we know the case of the Benin, the robbery on the Benin or the, or the road in recent, yeah, yeah. In recent, in recent weeks and months. We know about the kidnapping story. So what are the government, the state government, and the federal government put in place? Because most of the things will be traveling by road. Virtually all things will be coming down there by road. So what are the plans in place? I think I think that should be paramount. Even if we are discussing uh, the COVID-19 and the vaccination, which is very very important, the security of this thing should be discussed, should be our topmost uh, priority right now. Okay, now, Odun, let me come to you. In Lagos, okay. we, in Lagos, we always shout, echo for show, echo for show, right? Now, Edo said they're going to do the best sports festival ever in the history of Nigeria. And they're going to give Lagos a run for their money. With your, with your, we're looking at the preparation so far. Can they do that? Can they give Lagos a run for their money? Can they give Lagos a they run, run for, for their money? money? Is yes. That the question? Yes, that's the question. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, you mean I don't say right? Yes, of course. Yes, as I said, they are one of my favorites alongside um, Delta, the Rivers, Aqua Ibom. They can give Lagos a run for their money because uh, for me, they are, they are really, really prepared well. They are really, really prepared well. They have participated in various competitions and um, state festivals, including particularly Edo State and all, all, the, all of the states I've mentioned are my favorite. So I think they can give Lagos a run for their money, except for the fact that... Okay, uh, Abayami, let me come to you on this one. Abayami, um, uh, looking at Edo State and their preparations, um, Deputy Governor yeah? Shwaibu has consistently said, we are going to give Lagos a run for their money based on the events. As if we are ready for them, and Lagos will see this and say, Edo, you have done better than we did. Can they give Lagos a run for their money based on facilities, razzmatazz, you know? Can they do that? Um, Wale, that would be very tough. I think, I think, I think a code 2012, a code 2012 will still go down. Uh, a code 2012 will still go down as one of the best national sports festivals we've had. In, in Nigeria, because they don't have as the, as the, as the facilities. The facilities are in place, everything they put in place was there. Um, I don't is doing all they can to get, uh, to get themselves prepared for the tournament. But I think when it comes to the organization of the event, Lagos State is second to none. Okay. All right, I want to thank you very much for, t for taking your time off basketball to talk to us on the show this morning. Thank you very much. No problem. Have a time. great game. You too. Odun, thank you very much for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, a leading expert in crowd behavior at sports stadiums says allowing spectators into stadiums for the Euros could see coronavirus spread among fans. His comments came on the day UEFA lifted a directive that only allowed stadiums to be at 30% capacity at club or international matches under its jurisdiction. 
It could pave the way for large crowds to be in place for the European Championships, which take place this summer and are currently scheduled for 12 countries. Number of fans allowed into stadiums, if any, is still up to national governments to decide, as was the case when the 30% directive was in place. Now, Britain's Minister for Culture and Sports, Oliver Dowden, indicated in an interview that he was optimistic a large number of fans will be able to attend knockout games at Wembley, which hosts the semi-finals and final of the Euros. G. Keith Still, visiting professor of crowd science at Suffolk University, said there was a huge question over whether fans could be trusted to behave themselves. There's always a, um, a, an ambition to get crowds back, but it has to be at the basis of local infection rates. I mean, you saw what happened when um, uh, Madrid came and played in Liverpool. You know, the coronavirus cases spiked there. We haven't got a handle on international variants. So trying to get crowds back together again until we've got a complete handle on the virus is a risk. And that risk has to be taken at a political level. So this is not up to any sporting body saying, yeah, we would all love the crowds to come back. Let's face it, it you know, it, it, we want to get back to normal. We want to get out. We want to be celebratory. But uh, it, it has to be in the public's interest, the public health interest. That has to be the priority. And that's got to be driven by the data. It's got to be driven by the uh, criteria that the current uh, government are, are outlining, you know, the four tests. And we've got to get, keep monitoring it. Uh, this thing is, oh, we've only just started vaccination, you know, for goodness sake. Why undo all the good uh, for the sake of a couple of sporting events? It's not, um, it's not pragmatic enough. And I think that's where the government are certainly standing is evaluate things, release things slowly, see what happens. Can we trust people to behave in large sporting events, it, it, you know, and, and keep the virus at bay? I think there's a huge question here for the behavior of scientists. There's certainly a huge question about the logistics of major events. And it really has to be driven at a government level to make those decisions. Fourth seeded Andre Rublev outlasted on seeded Sebastian Koda on Thursday night to advance to the semi finals of the Miami Open. Russian Rublev defeated American Koda 7 5, 7 6, 7 in the close fourth quarter final match that saw a slight delay for rain. Now, Rublev broke serve to close out the first set, then needed three match points in the second set tiebreak to prevail and set up a semi final match with Paul Hubert Hulkox, who earlier ousted Stefanos Sissipas. The second semi final on Friday will feature seven seed Spaniard Roberto Bautista Agut and 21st seeded Italian Janik Sinner. Wow, on a Friday morning, plus sports and plus TV Africa. I always say the weekend is here and rest is near on a Friday morning. And it's good Friday, if you ask me. My okay, thank you, John. Same time on Monday morning, same time, same station, same program. Of course, my name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.